Hello guys, my name is BJ Min, the publisher of HowExpert.com, where we publish short, quick how-to guides on very unique and innovative topics by everyday experts. And today we have a special guest with one of our authors. Her name is Jessica Dumas, and she was the writer behind the book Monarch Butterflies 101, okay? Monarch Butterfly 101, which will teach you how to learn about monarch butterflies in one sitting. And I wanna read a quick bio about her before we get started with the interview about Jessica Dumas. Raised in the countryside of lovely central Minnesota, Jessica Dumas had plenty of butterflies around and was amazed by them. When she grew up, she married and moved to the city, had three children and a career. Her love for butterflies dwindled. Several years later, her mom passed away from breast cancer. She left her several butterfly-related personal items. Jessica's love for butterflies was rekindled and in remembrance of her, she became an advocate and a lover of butterflies with the desire to write about them. She has written poems about butterflies, but this is her first butterfly book. Jessica hopes you enjoy it. Jessica is also a freelance writer. Um, I wanna show you her website right now for those of you guys interested in freelance writing. Uh, she's a virtual assistant and a freelance writer. As you can see, she is the author of the book, but Monarch Butterfly, Jessica Dumas. Um, you're gonna learn a lot about this. By the way, in the link below the video in the future, you can click on the link to check out the book in the form of an ebook, paperback book, and in the future, we're working on an audio book as well. Um, her website is thebutterflyconnection.simdiff.com. This is Jessica right here. She has a lot of testimonials, success stories by um, good clients, including myself here, a <laughs> five-star rating. And uh, she's passionate about butterflies. You know, she, she's passionate about it. So that's really unique about her uh, and her unique passion. So Jessica, thank you for coming to this interview. I appreciate you. How are you doing? Hi there. Good, good. Awesome. Now let's get into your story. Like, how did you first discover about monarch butterflies? Uh, how did you get so passionate about it? Well, I, since I've always been a lover of butterflies, um, it kind of came natural when I heard about their plight, how they're dying. Um, they're, you know, like maybe one half of the amount that they used to be in the 80s, maybe. Wow. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I, I wondered, well, what can I do? Because um, there's got to be things that people, and, and there's a lot of foundations now that are doing lots of things to help them out. So, and there's a lot of websites to help them out. So um, that's how I got first, started on the idea. When did you first idea. discover about monarch butterflies? When did you first discover about it? Hmm. Well, I guess back when, when I first became like a, a lover again of butterflies. Um, the monarch always attracted me. It was, it, it's a special, it, it's actually, it's called the king of butterflies because it's, it's special, it's bigger than most of them and because of the height going to Mexico, they are very brave and very, um, well, strong. So I was attracted to them. Okay. Okay. Now, inside the book, I didn't, I really didn't know much mo about monarch butterflies. But as a just regular layman, when I look at butterflies, I always think of the monarch butterfly as the ultimate butterfly. I mean, the colors is recognizable to most people, and uh, but I had no yeah. idea that it was actually dying compared to 1980s. I mean, how, why is that happening? Well, there's several, several reasons. Um, probably the biggest one is development. Uh, you know, chopping down all the milkweed, the, the milkweed plants, um, and their habitat is disappearing. And then the other thing is the pesticides 
the GMO uh, foods is is killing the milkweed plant. So this plant is the one that the butterflies lay their eggs on. It's the only plant. And when they can't find those plants, well, they go other places, and a lot of times the, the caterpillars die. They don't survive because they don't have their regular food. And that, that's what's happening. What is the uh, milkweed, uh, the purpose of the milkweed for, that plant? What does it do? What does it, what does it produce? It, it's really, it's, it's people, most people think it's like a weed. I mean, that's I guess why it's called a milkweed. It's, um, it's kind of big and it has flowers on it, but um, it's, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you what, exactly. Right. Okay. Uh, you'd so have to, you know. in, in your own words, what is Monarch Butterfly One on One about and who is it for? And what is the purpose of Monarch Butterfly One on One, the book? What did you want to, what, what oh, message did you want to teach to the people who read this? Yeah, uh, it was like an educational thing, especially for young people who don't know anything about them. And also to get, get the word out about what's happening to them. Although there's other books, a lot of them, about how they're dying off. Um, I also wanted to just teach other things about them. I mean, there's so many different, you know, unusual things that about the monarch uh, that is interesting, at least to me. And, I'm sure there's so many butterfly advocates and they've got websites that have thousands of advocates and uh, just supporters that go and, you know, give money to help the different uh, foundations. That's to, fascinating. Um, yeah, research and such. So I'm sure there's people out there, younger people out there, older people out there, whoever's passionate about mother butterflies like yourself, what are some top websites that they can go to to uh, learn more about monarch butterflies that you recommend that you like as well? Okay, um, I would say the the, the monarchjointventure.org. Monarchjointventure.org, and what is that about? What's what is that website about? Um, they are well, okay, the leading well, organization that preserves them. Uh -huh. um, they have, they have uh, what do you call it, web, you know, videos yes. about them. Educational um, videos, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and another way to learn is, well, there's a movie called The Flight of the Butterflies. Okay. You can watch it on Netflix. It's a couple of years old, and it's just it's just really um, kind of follows the the path of the female butterfly from uh, four generations worth of butterflies, because it takes four generations in a year. Um, it's only one generation that goes to Mexico, oh. and they. They are the ones that are born like in um, August, September, and then they are the ones that fly, make their migration, and um, stay over the winter, and then come back in the spring. But the other generations do not do that. They just live a few months and die. Oh. So it's it's weird. How how do they know? You know. <laughs> It's it's amazing, you know. You, you wonder, okay. And people talk about the difference between evolution and creation. You know, uh, you, you think that only they could be created because they have this instinct built into them, and the, and the compass that they have. You know, they they know how to get to Mexico because they have a compass built into their. Um, is it their antenna? I believe. Um, so. It's just, it's kind of fascinating. 
Now you say they are they are being uh, their population is decreasing because of a. Uh, technology and whatnot, what can people do, everyone who watches this, who's passionate about monarch butterflies or like yourself, uh, what can they do to, okay. to this, prevent this? Yeah, yeah, there's several things they can do. In my book in chapter seven, I listed some of them, um, like, like planting your own garden with the milkweeds mm -hmm. and, and a butterfly garden that will attract them. Um, but a lot of people can't do that. But there's other things that isn't going to cost you anything. I mean, things like signing the petition uh, of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service um, that, um, let's see, it's, it's a Save the Monarch uh, type of thing. I don't know exactly what they do. I mean, I, there's so many different organizations that can't keep them all straight. That's okay. Those um, are some also good practical the, points, though. Yes. Continue. Yes. Right, right. There's another thing that um, people have been doing since the 1960s, um, becoming a citizen scientist, they're called, Wow. where they can go out and tag the butterflies. When they see a butterfly, a monarch, a monarch um, they can catch them. <laughs> they can put a little tag on them. Wow. And that will follow them. They can track them. And um, there's an app that you can download. It's called the Free Citizen Science app, which um, whenever you see a butterfly, you can call, you know, uh, record it on that app. And that's how they track them. They've been tracking them like that since they it was first discovered back in, I think it was, 50s sometime and let's see what else um you can uh you can create your own fundraising campaign absolutely there's a there's a uh website called forests for monarchs dot org and that's where you can go and sign up for this they will give you all the tools you need. The only thing you need to do is supply the entertainment or the, you know, the refreshments. Um, can you, you say can the website one more time? Uh, forests, like trees, forests. you know, forest with an S. Okay. For, for monarchs. Forest for monarchs dot org. Dot org. Okay, fantastic. Right. Now, for most yeah. people who may not yeah. know why it's so important to um, save the monarch butterfly, they may not know the layman. Why is it important to save this uh, monarch butterfly? Other than uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful being. You know? Oh right, right. Yes, yes. No, we depend on the monarch. It's a, a pollinator, just like the bee. Uh, mm. They pollinate. They go from flower to flower, pollinating. Um, and they they don't even know they're doing it, but that's what they're doing. Um, yeah. And. Uh, so, if we don't have them doing that, there's plenty of fruits, vegetables, nuts, you know, coffee, um, many things that we use that we might not have anymore if we don't have butterflies. Wow. Is it just the bees. butterflies that do that or other butterflies are dying as well and they're, they, they can't it, pollinate as well? Um, no, it's mainly the monarchs. Um, I think because of their need for the milkweed. Um, other butterflies, I think, are dwindling somewhat, but not as much. And then there's the bee, the honeybee, that's dying off too. Yes. And that is a big, a big pollinator. Oh. So, um, right. If we don't have those, we're in trouble. Well, so can you mention what kind of foods uh, get affected if, uh, if the population of the monarch butterfly decreases more and more? You mentioned what kind of food yeah. specifically for the human, most people out there, because it affects everyone. Yeah. Yes. Um, any fruits, vegetables, um, anything that's grown by plant, you know, nuts, coffee. Uh, can't think of anything else, but that's... <laughs> That's a big thing. That's you know, a like, big thing. Imagine a world without coffee these days. Right. I mean, we, we depend on our fruits and vegetables. 
we have to have it in our diet. And is it already decreasing from your research because of the uh, uh, a decreased population of monarch butterflies? These kind of foods that you mentioned, production. Of oh, are they decreasing? Um, no, but the thing is, is people are boycotting in a way the um, ones that are uh, used. You know that the GMO um, are, are growing with with that genetically modified. Uh, Things like corn, soybeans. Yes. Oh man, a lot of different foods are genetically modified, and um, if we is that don't a good thing those, or bad thing for the layman who may not know what GMO is? What is GMO, and why is it good or bad from your yeah, perspective? It, it's well, it's not. It's not that it hurts you to eat that kind of food. Um, you know, it's it's fine. The thing is, is that if you, if you stop eating that and eat the, the organic instead, then you're telling the uh, people that grow those that you don't want that stuff anymore. It, it, and that's a way to, um, well, kind of fight it because uh, you're not if you're not eating that food, then they lose their, of course, they lose money. Absolutely. And, um, now that's fascinating. Can you can you elaborate? Uh, go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. Oh yeah, and I'm fascinated by. I'm sure there's uh, people who may watch this in the future who are also passionate about monarch butterflies. And can you elaborate a little bit on your story, like how it, you you had a you discovered your passion and it the passion rekindled, you know? Because uh, I'm sure there's people out there who are passionate about monarch butterflies, but not everyone is. So they may feel like, oh, I'm a little weird. But you're an example of uh, someone really yeah. passionate about this. What's what's your story? Yes. Why? Is well, I kind of carried on my mother's passion which I really didn't even know she had that much. I knew she had butterfly items and I always loved butterflies. And so I would decorate with them maybe somewhat. But once she died, I felt like, oh man, you know, I want to carry on that yeah. legacy of hers. And um, so now I, I do all kinds of things with, well, mostly monarchs now. It used to be any kind of butterflies, but monarchs are my main thing. So I, I use them in my decorating. Uh, I make gifts. I make. I have. I have butterfly parties. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, my grandkids love it because um, I make. You know, everything looks like a butterfly, and I make games out of it. Like you know, okay. Count the butterflies in my house. <laughs> Whoever gets the closest number wins, you know. <laughs> but the, nobody gets the closest number. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, yeah, in even your room, there's an, on the background, there's butterfly stickers and whatnot. And right, uh, right. <laughs> you know, everyone has a unique passion. That's why I learned through uh, just being a publisher through How Expert. And I'm sure someone out there right now is passionate about monarch butterflies, just like you. And maybe. Right. Was there ever a time you felt like I'm a little weird, but in the beginning when you're maybe earlier when you were younger, like, but yeah. you, you went with it. What's your advice for the young person out there who's passionate about it? Maybe they may feel like an outsider because they're passionate about monarch butterflies. What's your advice for them? Oh, oh, sure. Um, just go for it. I mean, you can become, uh, you know, in the field of animals or, or insects, whatever and be one of those people that are out in the field um you know looking for them or something like that um you can there's different avenues of course that you can go into a career um dealing with them uh lab work like the the minnesota uh university yes they have a, a lab that they do a lot of research there. And of course, I'm from Minnesota, so I'm partial to them. Um, the poem that I wrote in the book is, is posted on their website. Um, 
Wow, okay. Let's see, what is there? What oh it's just it's monarchlab.org. Um and they also have a store that's online. Yes. That you can buy things which all proceeds go to the lab. Um you know, gifts, uh different cute little items that you can buy there. Yeah, that's so that's another way you yeah, so it's like it's like if you're passionate about it, follow your dreams, follow your passion. Plus, whatever talent you have, like Jessica, her talent is writing and poetry. She wrote about poems about monarch butterflies. She even wrote a book about monarch butterflies to make an impact, to to share her passion and message and mission to the world. And for those of you out there who are passionate about monarch butterflies, wherever you live, I want to encourage you guys, you girls, whoever you are, whatever age. Follow your dreams, and and it's you're gonna imp, you're gonna change the world. Like she said, we need monarch butterflies, so that's why I want to encourage, just like Jessica said today. So if you guys are also interested in getting in contact with Jessica uh, for freelance services, she also has a business. I think your business is named after the butterfly, right? The butterfly connection. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, I you have can go a to contact page on my website where you can send me an email. Absolutely. So, there will be a link below this video to get in contact. Uh, check out our website, thebutterflyconnection.simdiff.com. The link will be below this video, so you can check out her uh, business. Um, also, if you're passionate about monarch butterflies, you can get in contact with her, I'm sure, as well, right? And uh, so, Jessica, thank you for being yeah. on this interview. I appreciate you. And for those of you guys out there who want to check out her book, Monarch Butterfly 101, Click the link below, learn about monarch butterflies, and hopefully you read it and you take action to save this creature uh, so, because it's going to make a positive impact in the world. Thank you, Jessica, for being on this interview. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Take care. Okay, bye now.